welcome back to Science Made Simple. I'm your host, Dr. Boyd the Chemist. Today, we're gonna grow some bean sprouts. Here's what you'll need. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. So, in the first version, you'll need a piece of paper towel, a Ziploc bag, a little water, and some dried beans. In the second version, you'll need cotton balls, a cup, a little bit of water, and some dried beans. Today's demonstration is part of our series on plants. Now, if you wanna learn more about plants, start with my video entitled, Color Changing Celery. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more fun and educational science experiments. So where do plants like trees and flowers come from? Well, many of them actually start out as seeds. And those plants can be very clever in how they spread their seeds. For example, an apple tree has that fruit that we love to eat called an apple. And on the inside of that apple, there are these little seeds. When an apple falls from the apple tree and lands on the ground, over time, the flesh of that apple rots away, revealing the seeds. And sometimes, those seeds actually get into the ground to start the growth of a new apple tree. Another example is the dandelion flower. Now, the dandelion flower has those beautiful bright yellow petals at the top of the stem at first, but with some time, those yellow petals go away and you're left with these white puffy seeds at the top. So how do they spread? Well, they spread when the wind blows and all those little white puffy seeds begin to fly in the air and they land somewhere in the ground, starting the growth of a new dandelion. You also can get the seeds to spread by you picking them up and blowing them just like that. Pretty clever, huh? Normally, in order for a seed to grow roots and to sprout a plant, it needs to find soil to grow in. Some plants grow in certain types of soil better than other types of soil. So, the type of soil that a seed lands in does have an effect on the ability of the plant to grow. But can we cause our dry beans to grow without any soil? Let's find out. As far as safety is concerned, there is no need for gloves, goggles, or lab coat. This experiment is safe. Wet a piece of paper towel such that it is slightly damp. Then fold it in half. Place a few beans on the inside of the folded paper towel. Now, insert the folded paper towel into a Ziploc sandwich bag and place it somewhere that it can get some sun. Check the beans in five days to see if they have begun to grow any roots. And one note to make, you don't want this to be in direct sunlight all day, but you do want to place it somewhere where we'll get some sunlight. In the second method, place cotton balls in a cup. Now, place your beans in between the cotton balls. Add just enough water to make the cotton balls damp. Now, set the cup somewhere that it can get some sunlight for a few days. All right, so it's been about four or five days since we started our experiment with the bean sprouts. And I'm pretty excited because I can already see that there's something going on. Let's find out if these beans have sprouted. In the experiment using the cotton balls, we can see that there are definitely some sprouts beginning to grow. In the experiment using the Ziploc bag, there are also some sprouts beginning to grow. In fact, there appears to be a little bit of a root system. 
So, both methods are successful, despite the fact that there is no soil. All right, as you can already see with our cotton ball plant here, we have some, some bean sprouts. So, as you can see, even in the absence of soil, we're able not only to grow bean sprouts, but the stem and the leaves of the plant are beginning to grow too. Pretty impressive. <laughs>